So if you are coming to this video first, uh, there was a, a previous video where we went through some ideas about differentiation, did some examples, and these are the questions that we finished with. So you might want to go and have a look at that if you just want to uh, have a go at these ones now without seeing the other video, that's fine. You might want to pause the video and give uh, the questions a go if you haven't already. So now's your chance to do that. And having completed the questions now, we'll go through and um, if you were stuck on any of them, we'll see how to do them and also you can check your answers. So the first one, um, there's not much space here, so I might have to write a little bit small, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. The first one, we're just gonna follow that rule where we times the front by the power and reduce the power by one. So three times five, we get 15x and reduce the power by one becomes x squared. And same thing here, but first of all, we need to write it as two x to the minus two. Uh, so just highlighting that as the answer, uh, whereas these are equal, uh, the answer is the differential. So I shouldn't be using an equal sign. I just thought I'd circle that to make that clear. Um, that's what the answer is there. This one we differentiate in the same way. We're going to multiply the front by minus 2, which gives us minus 4, and reduce the power by 1. It's x to the minus 3. So again, that is the differential of that one. And now it's given us an equation, which basically these two things added together. And when we differentiate this, we're just going to get these two differentials added together. So um, dy by dx is going to equal 15x squared minus 4x to the minus 3. And we want the turning point. That equals naught. Okay, what we're going to need to do to solve this is we're going to have to multiply everything by x to the power of um, 3 to cancel that all out. And we're going to get 15x to the 5, because we're doing x squared times x cubed, uh, which gives us x to the 5, Minus 4, of course, the x cubed and the x to the minus 3 cancel, and we still just get naught on the other side. So we've got 15x to the 5 equals 4. So x is going to be, it's going to be 4 divided by 15, and then the 15th, not the 15th root, the 5th root of uh, 4 over 15. So goodness only knows what that is. Um, let's give it a go. Shift any, oh no, that's the cube root. Shift any root. We want the fifth root of the fraction. Oh, what's the fraction? 4 over 15. And it's thinking about that. We get this number 0 0.7677, etc. So 3 sig fig, call that 0 0.768. Or you could just leave it like that. That's nicer because that's the precise value. And uh, then we'd have to worry about rounding. Okay, so let's move on to question two. For the curve, this is a big long polynomial and we just want to find dy by dx. So we just do each section, there's four sections, just do them all separately. Times the front by the power, three threes are nine, reduce the power by one. And then it's minus two times two gives us four, x to the 1, I'm not going to write to the power of 1. A linear term, we just get the number, the x disappears because it will become x to the naught, which is 1 itself, and a number just disappears completely. We don't need that. So there we go, that was easy. And find the gradient of the curve when x equals 1, but well, we're just going to put 1 in, substitute it into here. So the gradient is going to be 9 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 5, which is obviously just going to be 9 take 4 plus 5, which is going to be equal 10. Simple. Moving on to question 3, the displacement of a particle. Ah, so this is the displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So displacement, if we differentiate that, we get velocity, differentiate that, we get acceleration. So it says to find a, an expression for the velocity. Well, we're just going to differentiate the displacement to get that. So velocity is ds by dt. You don't really need to write the ds by dt. You just write v equals and times the front by the power. 
reduce the power by 1, times the front by the power, so we get 6, reduce the power by 1, we don't need to put t to the power of 1, and we get plus 5, and the minus 4 is going to disappear, so that was easy. Find the acceleration of the particle at time 3 seconds. Well, we've gone to the velocity, we need to differentiate again to acceleration, so I'll just come under the box because we're running out of space. Acceleration is going to be dv by dt. So differentiate this thing. 2 times 3, we get 6t to the 1 plus just a 6, and the 5 is going to disappear. So that's what we get. What about when it is 3 seconds? Well, we're going to replace that with 3. So that is going to be 6 times 3 plus 6, which is 24. I imagine it is meters per second squared. Oh, yes, I've got meters per second there. So, oh, I just realized you can't see that to the bottom there. Uh, so the answer is 24. And the last question, differentiate the curve with this equation. All right, well, same thing as we've just done. dy by dx equals times the front by the power, 12x squared, reducing the power by 1, plus 2x minus 3, and we get rid of the plus 9. And then it says point P lies on the curve. Okay, so we had some curve, don't know what it looks like, but there is point P. At point P, the gradient is minus 3 over 2. Okay, so my, my picture wasn't a very good picture then, because uh, the gradient's supposed to be negative, so maybe point P is actually there where the gradient's negative. But it doesn't matter. Uh, the point is that we know what the gradient is, and we want to find out the coordinates of point P. And here we've got an equation for the gradient equaling a function of x. So hopefully what we can do is solve for x. That might turn out to be not very nice because it's a, uh, a quadratic equation. So we might get two answers. But we'll see. We'll see how we get on. So if the gradient's this, we're going to get minus 3 over 2 equals 12x squared plus 2x minus 3. Multiply by 2, just to get rid of that denominator, minus 3 equals 24x squared plus 4x minus 3. Actually, what we can do, because there's a minus 3 on both sides, that's quite nice, that just cancels. So we get that 24x squared plus 4x equals naught. We can factorise this by common factors by taking 4x out. Uh, so that gives us 6x plus 1. And that equals naught. And that gives us two answers for x. x equals naught uh, from this x. And from this one, x equals minus 1 over 6. Just what do you put in as the x value to make that bracket equal naught? Well, times it by 6, you'd get minus 1, and minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Anything times 0 gives us 0. So those are our two values. So actually, sorry, it should have said in the question... Um, find the possible coordinates of point P, uh, or it should have said that, you know, P wasn't on the axis or something like this, uh, on one of the axes, because um, it could be either of them. So it's a badly worded question. But anyway, let's persevere. We can find out the y value for this one by putting naught in. So naught plus naught, take naught, we get 9. So that one's nice and easy. And this one, this one's a little bit trickier. We're going to have to substitute minus 1 sixth into all of this. So I think that's a calculator jobby. It is going to be 4 bracket 1 sixth. And that was cubed. And then plus 1 sixth. And that was squared minus 3 times 1 sixth. And then plus 9 at the end. And it has to think about that. And oh, what a lovely fraction that is. 9, 2, 3. Oh, oh I've just seen that it says x equals y equals um, 9, 2, 3 over 108. So there are two answers for this. There are two possible places where the gradient is minus 3 over 2. We've got this one here on the uh, y-axis, where x equals 0 and y equals 9, and then we've got this slightly messier answer where we've got these. Now, technically, it says find coordinates, so I suppose I ought to have written these as coordinates. So let's pair them up. 
as coordinates. It's always a good idea to do that because if if they're written like this, it's pretty obvious to the examiner that these two go as a pair and these two go as a pair, but it's always good to actually pair them. So you're saying, yeah, I, I know that the naught and the nine are a pair of coordinates and not the naught and this one and, and these two matching up. Just to show the examiner you know which x's go with which y's. So always a good idea to show you the examiner that you know but you mean business. So two coordinates. Uh, possible positions of point P. Hope you got those answers, and if you didn't, I hope you can see how we're supposed to get them.